Thomas Henry, everybody. Thomas Henry! Oh, good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Are we good? That was uh, Sunday afternoon enthusiasm. That was excellent. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just visiting over from the UK. I love being back in New York. It's, it's, it's great to be back here. I picked a fucking shit time to visit your country, though. Like, the day before I got on a plane, our Prime Minister tanked our economy. So, like, I went to JFK to change some money. I gave him £100. They just gave me, like, a Coke and a smile. That was... <laughs> And, and, and the smile was ten dollars extra, which was disappointing. But like things are things are pretty bleak at home at the minute. I don't know if you guys are keeping abreast of uh, news in the UK. That, that, that's English privilege, by the way. I get to use the word abreast in a sentence. Um, but uh, we're, we're paying two grand a month at the minute for our heating bills. There was a, there was a headline in the UK the other day that said Brits are going to have to choose between eating and heating. Which is ridiculous, because no one's going to choose British food over anything. <laughs> That's a silly headline. Uh, but it, it's nice being back here. I'm actually I'm, I'm celebrating a little bit while I'm back. Uh, just had a birthday last week. I just turned 38 years old. Woo! Thank you, thank you. Very nice. Yeah, cheers. I beat Jesus. Woo! I mean, I'm not saying I'm better at living than Jesus, but I'm objectively better at living than Jesus. Um, <laughs> It's a 38 interesting age though. It's not a it's not a big birthday by any means. But I was out for a beer with, with a friend, and uh, he said to me, "Tom, you look really young for your age." And I was like, oh, "Thanks, mate." And he's like, "Not a compliment." <laughs> I was a bit confused. I'm like, "Well, what, what do you mean?" And he's like, "Yeah, you somehow look like both a Catholic priest and the boy he molested." <laughs> Yeah, you just shot me a look like, God damn it, that might be the most accurate thing you've ever said about a face. <laughs> Which is true, it's very true. But uh, it's, it's not always fun. It, it does get me into, into trouble sometimes, my um, cherubic visage. Uh, like I, was, I, I was backpacking once in America, and I just graduated university, but I looked like I just graduated the maternity ward. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was 22, and I was trying to get from, from LA to Vegas, but I didn't have any money. So I posted a rideshare ad on a website I'd never heard of called Craigslist. Yeah, one pervert's used Craigslist. Okay. I'd never used Craigslist, so I didn't know it was basically like Facebook Marketplace, but with a much higher murder to user ratio. <laughs> well, I was not prepared for that, so I posted an ad with my 22-year-old British face, and was just like, Hello! English boy looking for a ride! <laughs> Terrible choice of words. Terrible choice of words straight out of the gate. And I, I knew it was a bad choice of words, so I got a phone call in a minute. <laughs> this guy rang me, and I've never been able to hear an erection over the phone before. This guy just rang me, he was like, uh, Hello, this is, uh, this is Andrew, I'm, I'm calling you about that ride share. And I was like, oh, fantastic, so you're going to go from LA to Vegas, are you? No! I want you to come to Indiana! <laughs> I did not want to go to Indiana. <laughs> like, I know when you travel, you're supposed to like take risks and find yourself, but I did not want to find myself chained to a radiator in the Midwest. <laughs> that wasn't a trip I was trying to go on. So I told Andrew I don't want to go to Indiana, and he sounded a bit upset. To be honest, he was like, oh, gee, that's a real shame, because, uh, well, me and my wife, um, yeah, we're swimmers. And honestly, we just want to put your cute little butt in our van for a couple of weeks and just see what happens. Yeah, I don't know if there's a book on like how to be a little cherub, but if there is, the first line of the first page of that book, the best advice is never get in the van. <laughs> never get in the van. And I was, I was 22 at the time. I had no idea what a swimmer was. My best guess, my best guess, was that it had something to do with golf. <laughs> And I was kind of right in the sense that Andrew was interested in a long drive that led to a hole in one of us. It's <laughs> my naughtiest joke. Uh, <laughs> so at this stage, at this stage, I give Andrew a firm answer, right? But I didn't just say no, or I didn't say send me a picture of your wife, maybe we can work something out. Instead, I gave him the most English answer of all time, which was, no, thank you, Andrew, those dates don't work for me. <laughs> I think it was just a scheduling conflict. <laughs> which, I think that might be the high point of British politeness, I think. Where the only thing between you and certain death is a calendar conflict. <laughs> like, murder? I'd bloody love to. Wednesday's hard. <laughs> Got a... Paddington Bear practice squad. Uh, 
So that's uh, so that's really, yeah, th 38 is an interesting age. I'm, I'm, I'm still dating at 38. Any, any, anybody else? Lonely? No, <laughs> uh, no dating, it's alright. But dating at 38 is different to dating in, in your 20s. Dating at 38 is a bit like, um, it's a bit like flying Spirit Airlines. In the sense that it's very clear this wasn't my first choice. <laughs> and uh, let's be honest, I've got too much baggage to make it comfortable. Uh, but uh, dating at 38 is interesting. I don't, I don't know about you guys, all my friends got married around 30. Uh, and I'm 38, but I read the other day, the average marriage only lasts seven years. So really, I'm just 12 months away from dating one of my friend's wives. <laughs> or like somebody similar, it doesn't have to be, you know, I'm not going to be around their house being like, well, oh, it's one of you, statistically. <laughs> Jimmy? No? All right, I'll try Dave, okay. Um, no, that'd be psychopathic, that'd be weird. Um, so. That's, uh, that, 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 that's interesting. I think when you date a bit older, you end up sort of dating people you wouldn't have thought you'd date when you were younger, right? So I, I, I dated someone recently who had a little kid. Um, that was great. I would happily do it again. Um, I love kids. Kids love me. Um, mostly because they, they think I'm one of them. <laughs> like, every toddler I've ever met looks at me the exact same way. Just like, oh! <laughs> He's the one who's promised! <laughs> Like us, but big. <laughs> he can reach high places and speak to the food givers. <laughs> this one shall be our king. <laughs> and you can buy King of the Babies t-shirts outside. Uh, gonna charge dollars instead of pounds because I need to eat food. Um, so, that's, uh, so that's interesting. But I think, well, I, I used to live over here and I think that um, dating might be the single biggest difference between British and American culture. I think, because British people don't date. Um, we just we, we just we, we do something different. We just pick someone and then get drunk with them often enough to have children, uh, <laughs> which isn't dating. Uh, it's how you end empire, but it isn't. It's not dating. Uh, and uh, I definitely did, did better with uh, American girls than, than British girls. Um, and I'm a bit confused by that, but it's, it's, it's nothing to do with the way I look, because um, I still look like Winnie the Pooh with his trousers on. Uh, so it's nothing to do with that. I think when, when I was living here. The reason I did better with American girls was two things, I think. Uh, number one, I'm from the north of England. And two, Game of Thrones was fucking massive the whole time I lived there. <laughs> so as a northerner, Jon Snow was 100% responsible for 75% of that sex I had in New York. <laughs> I would remember like, going on a date with a girl and she's like, oh my god, you sound like Jon Snow. <laughs> hey, can I ask you a question? Like. Are you like from North of the Wall? <laughs> and I'm a bit of a nerd, so I didn't hear that as a flirty thing. I heard that as someone who needs help with their Game of Thrones knowledge. So she said, she, she said, are you from North of the Wall? And I was like, no, because <laughs> John's not. <laughs> you silly Billy. <laughs> I mean, he goes North of the Wall very briefly in season three, but he's from Winterfell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that little speech accounts for the 25% of the sex I didn't have. <laughs> okay, so once the Jon Snow myth goes, just Frodo. And, uh, that is a very different fetish. <laughs> It'll get you laid, but uh, it's a very, uh, very, very different fetish. But it's, uh, it's interesting, because like, dating in, in this country is very, very fun. It's not always fun and games. Like, um, I was, just before I came to New York, I was doing some shows down in a place called Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah, have you anyone been? Whoa. You have? I have. Yeah? I, I, I thought it was quite an interesting town. I've never been picked up by an Uber driver who had more guns and teeth. That was, uh, <laughs> that was new to me. It was like rural New Jersey with more guns and fewer chromosomes. That was, uh, <laughs> it was an interesting, in, 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 interesting vibe. And I was doing a show down there, and I could see somebody in the front row clearly had the hots for me. Just sort of see them there. Giant, heaving breasts. <laughs> covered in barbecue sauce. And, an awful lot of hair. His name was Clarence. <laughs> and this guy was staring at me, but it wasn't like, you know sometimes a guy will stare at you like, like he wants to fight you? Like it, it, it wasn't like that. He was like lusting after me like I was the last piece of chicken at a late night KFC. <laughs> Just this giant man like... <clears throat> <laughs> you know? That pretty mouth is confusing me. <laughs> This boy's finger licking good. <laughs> it's after the show, this giant man comes up to me and just goes, Boy, the way you talk made me feel 
<laughs> Awful peculiar. <laughs> Man, I want to buy you a drink. To which I said, no thanks, thanks. <laughs> I'll go fly back to New York tomorrow. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell you ain't from around here. But it's awful impolite to refuse a man when he's offering to buy you a drink. So we're still together. <laughs> uh, you guys have been an absolute delight. I've been Thomas Henry. Please give it up for our